Hi there and welcome back to week two of this month where we are looking at breathing. My name is Hannah Wiggins, also known as Singing Hin. This week we're taking a look at the clavicular breathing and then we're going to carry on and take a look at thoracic breathing. So then, clavicular breathing, what on earth is that? Well, this bone here, which a lot of people think of as the collarbone, is also called the clavicle. That's its kind of Latin name, the clavicle. And there's one obviously on both sides. And this actually is attached or attaches. There are muscles behind this that attach to your lungs. Now, we all think of our lungs as being round here, but actually the top part of our lungs, the very, very small top lobes of our lungs are sitting right up here towards our clavicle. So what's happening then is your clavicular muscles are lifting up, increasing the volume of your lungs through doing that, which is pulling air in. However, because these muscles are super small, because the area of the lung that they're able to actually lift up and increase volume through is actually still quite small, your clavicular breath is very shallow. We think of it as shallow, it's small. And that would be the breath if somebody tapped you on the shoulder. <gasps> that kind of thing. It's through here and you can feel the tension here. <gasps> And I've literally, to be fair, there is other breathing going on, but we're focusing on where the main bit is. It's a, it's this bit when you're literally, you can feel that tension idea. And that literally is clavicular breathing. It has a purpose when we're singing. However, for our purposes at this level and what we're considering when we're singing, we're gonna shelve that one and say, that's okay, it happens and it's fine when it happens, but if we're wanting to control our breathing and get our breathing steady, we actually wanna move away from that because you can see already the amount of tension created on the neck and we're very much trying to get away from tension around this neck. So we're gonna shelve clavicular breathing for now, but I wanted you to know what it is. Let's look now at thoracic breathing. What is that? Well, the thoracic cavity is technically all the parts of your body that are to do with respiration, which includes the heart as well as the lungs. But for our purposes, we're thinking of it as the chest area and in particularly the ribs. Now, your ribs, as you will all know, look kind of like that at the front and they, they actually, don't forget, they have similar at the back. So whenever I'm doing this, don't just imagine two thumbs at the back. Imagine similar at the back, but not quite as long because they, they don't have as much to carry at the back because we tend to be forward. The muscles that are used to open up the lungs and create that volume are actually what we call the intercostal muscles and those are the muscles between the ribs and there's actually several different pairs but I'm not going to bore you with the details. Suffice to say that those muscles, some of those pairs will open up the, the, the ribs and pull the ribs apart and other muscles will pull those ribs back together. So when you breathe from your chest and I will show you that in a minute, you're essentially getting the muscle, engaging the muscles which pull your ribs apart. So if I imagine my fingers on my ribs and if I pull them apart, if you can imagine something inside that, a bit like with the bellows, that's the ribs together. And if I pull them apart, it's opening them up in pretty much the same way. And that is then increasing the volume of the lung capacity, which is pulling air in. Now, you know you're using your lungs because it's your kind of your general go-to kind of breathing. It's that shrug that, okay, fine, whatever. And you know because your chest is rising up and back down again. Occasionally you'll feel your shoulders rising up with it 
and sometimes when you've got your shoulders involved it's because you're actually you're actually tensing this clavicle area around here as well so you might be adding a bit of clavicular breathing to it so which is what I said earlier that these things quite often are combined but your chest breathing is that if you compare that now to a clavicular breath it's here it's up here that I'm using it. And the amount of air I'm actually able to take in for the clavicular breath is a lot less. So we can say that using our chest and the muscles, those intercostal muscles between our ribs, we're going to get more air in because we can get more movement of the lungs, more opening of the lungs using the muscles between the ribs to open that out and then to pull it back closed again. So the thing to remember with your ribs is when you're breathing in they're not just going out but they're going out and up so you can see here so my rib cage you probably can't see because of how I'm built but my rib cage is coming out and opening and expanding but at the same time it's coming up so that's when you're getting that movement here Okay, so that is chest breathing. Now, chest breathing, there's absolutely nothing wrong with it as long as you don't take it so far as feeling as though you need to take a breath all the way up to your neck because that's when you start engaging clavicular breathing and that's when things can tense up. So that would be... And you're really, really, really tense through here. And there's a lot of breath going on and you can see my shoulders have lifted they're all scrunched up as well and that's what we're looking to not do that's what we're not looking for what we're looking for if you are chest breathing for whatever purposes for your delivery for your singing you just want to be breathing from here and that's about it however there's a better type of breath again than that which we can use in conjunction with that breathing to really get the most out of our lungs because this breath is still not as deep as it could be, not as shallow as clavicular, but not as deep as it could be. So if you can hold on, hold your breath, we'll be back next week to talk about diaphragmatic breathing.